Yes, back again. Another Thursday, Thursday night for Paul. Thursday afternoon. What is it for you, Matt? Meeting morning. It's early, early morning for me <laughs> on a Wednesday. Hey, where's my Where's my coffee? Where's, <laughs> All right, from the top. Hello and welcome to season two, episode thirty-five of Carvers and Creators a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We ask that you please give us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from, and if you have any questions for the carvers and our special guests. Let's meet the carvers. First, he's an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He's a 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins, Paul Dever. Welcome. There he is. Happy Thursday, everybody. There Happy he is. Thursday. Happy Thursday to you. I right back at you. Thirsty Next. Thursday. He's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Welcome. Bienvenidos yes. a la playa. Hi, people. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> awesome. Our returning guest today is a foam fabricator, creature creator, puppet builder, monster maker, and film industry professional for over 30 years, working on such movies as Hunger Games and Avatar, just to name a few. He's a oh, foam wow. fabber himself, Ted Haynes. Welcome back. Thank you very much. I hope people aren't getting sick of me. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> love you, dude. It's, Wasn't it the 15th time on, I think, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Third, 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 third maybe. Good. I yeah. think maybe the third, yeah. Well, but, this, yeah, this is your first appearance in season two. Ooh, okay. you were in season at the end of season one. See, everything's right. different now. Yeah, it's so. all yes. different. Is, it, is that real? Is that real? Is that real yes, life? It is. He was on episode forty-seven. Oh wow, we've done a lot of episodes. Yeah, yeah. we're in, we're in, we're in the mid eighties at this point. Wow, we'd yeah. be put down if we were a dog. Yeah, we would. <laughs> in show years, we're uh, yeah, we're old people at this point. <laughs> show years are on season fifty. <laughs> Look at this handsome fella. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. From the top, let's road. check out our carves from last week. The carving subject was elated cartoonish. So, Matt, tell us about this guy. Uh, tiki. That's all I can say. I, I, um, I. It's it was such a ambiguous thing. I, I, we started carving. I think Paul and I probably had the same the same problem. We just started carving right. and like. How does, I mean, again, it's the beauty of the wheel and the curse of the wheel. If you have something that's kind of open, like a like car, cartoonish figure, you could do something that's really known or you could just do some silly, you know, anyway. So this is what I did. So it was a, um, I took, I took a, a donor kabocha and made like a little flower, or a, you know, leaf crown and, and the little leaves on the side to make them look more tropical. But yeah, he's a, he's a smiling little tiki. Oh, the, the teeth of dynamite. They got yeah. that cool texture in there. And and I like what you do with the eyes, too. That's not normally what you do. Right. I, yeah, but it, you know, it's cartoony, you know. And, it's yeah. cool. It's awesome. I loved it. I are, still there, love are there it. separate I pieces on there? <clears throat> yeah. Aside so he, from the, the, the headdress. So the top, the top, you know, regular one, I just I cut off this knob so you can see kind of how the, the normal curve of it would be. And I just kind of stuck that on top. And then the little pieces on the side were uh you know also right. donuts from the kabocha but other than that it's all one chunk oh wow that's fantastic yeah. it's, it's hard to be creative every week and you pull it off <laughs> time after time hopper oh, oh stop it <laughs> speaking of which here's paul from last week <laughs> dude this guy when you said you were going to go no nose i i did i just couldn't picture it, but then this guy popped up I'm like oh my god that's so great there's it, no nose it, yeah, right. It's like uh, one of those. Um, it's like an emoji. If it was, um, if you pressed silly putty into it from the Sunday comics and right. then pulled it. it. Yeah. yeah. It sucks. But it sucks because in the picture you can't see that the the eyebrows were floating like a good three quarters of an inch off the face. I wanted to do that, you know, the raised brows. So I did it oh, with a little wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't read. In my brain, it was going to be. Awesome. It was up here and here. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be like a visual effect that people are going to be amazed by. But in <laughs> but the I, end, I, I, love I should have just glued them all. Yeah, one's higher than the other. I love that part. It looks, it does has look it, very cool. Has it rotted away yet? or? There, no, there, actually, 
you've got opportunity then. Yeah. I, 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 after the fact, I did glue them on, and now he's settling in a magic elixir, as Ray gotcha. would call it, the uh, the saving bath right now. So I'm going to hold on to, uh, I think from here on out, Maddie, right? We're going to hold on to him and bring him with us. Yeah, bring, bring him out to, bring to California to, to, to have them meet Ted. Yeah, they're all coming to you, Ted. Get ready. Good God, I gotta make room. <laughs> well, I only Paul... get this little six by six space here. It's like double my space. That's awesome. It's like a mansion. Oh no, I, I've been. Yeah, I've seen that. It's a much bigger space. He's he's uh, a little bigger. Yeah, I'm huddled in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> well, Paul, you didn't use a nose, but I definitely used a nose in mine. Oh, hey! <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> and and it's funny because I remember um, as, as I thought back about it, I'm just like, oh, I should have used this for the circus one that's on the wheel. And uh, and but I'll have to do something else. But uh, but I just wanted to make it cartoony. I just started just going overboard on it. And, uh, <laughs> so there you go. Oh, so there's <laughs> that's that's you, right? Yeah, that's me. I, yeah, I took a picture of myself. To tell. I didn't know you could grow like the, the crazy whiskers like that. I've never seen you with such facial hair. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted it to be a little scummy, but uh, it, it, it. I was. I, I could not. Um, scummy the clown. Scummy, scummy. the clown. Uh, there you go. a great name. Yeah, Yucko's brother. <laughs> yeah, but well, Yucko was album one. Scummy is album two. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nice. I love it, Mick. That's really cool. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's funny because it, it it looks so much different. Like when I actually posted it, like Instagram and stuff like that, it has like a different feel to it. Um, but um, but yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun. These these challenges are 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 definitely challenging my creativity too. Because I'm like, do I put makeup on myself? I ah, screw it. I'm just gonna put a little bit on, and then um, <laughs> yeah. So it, it was. It's just, it's it's just fun to do every week. It is. Oh, it is. It's I it's a it. nice distraction from from all the rigmarole of the week reality Absolutely. yes is that what for the sure. rigor, was that what what is rigor i don't know i heard it on a cartoon <laughs> rigmarole or in a you song got it. you got it paul <laughs> thank you <laughs> Nailed Nailed it. It. Nailed it. words are hard guys words are hard <laughs> <laughs> i had to do math this morning that's oh no harder. oh most most harder -er. I'm sorry, you take sorry the, to hear that. Would you have to take the mcas my kids just had to take that <laughs> school test oh my goodness so, Ted, I'd like to yes. reintroduce you to the fourth yes, member of Carvers and Creators responsible Ooh. for our choosing our carving subject tonight. It is the hollow wheel, the center spinner. And as always, okay. Paul will tell you more about it right now. Let's hear it. Hi, guys. Well, say hello to my little friend, the <laughs> wheel. Okay, so we are going to spin this bad boy twice. And the first spin will be this inner circle here. The second spin will be the outer circle. So let's run through our choices. We're going to start with non-face, meaning just that, really. Yeah. Um, and then we still have nightmare fuel, voluptuous, fantasy, psychopathic, outer space, guest choice. Uh, last week was cartoonish. It's been switched to monster palooza-ish. Ooh. <laughs> Primate and villain. <laughs> and for the second choice, this will be what the subject is feeling. They're either going to be horny, terrified, enraged, irritated, elated, grizzled, stoned, euphoric, confused, or repulsive. Oh, so that's the choices, kids. And I'll nice. tell you, it doesn't get easier. No. But it is fun. Here we go. Nightmare fuel. Do we spin again? Because we just did it. Or do it nightmare we just, fuel. Just, just did nightmare fuel. Nightmare fuel. Yeah, I think it's. A so good we're gonna respin. A, a rare re respin. A rare respin. Let's try it out. Okay, let's do it. Monster Palooza ish. There you oh, go. Lord. <laughs> That's a wide open range. <laughs> Ted, I'm gonna need reference. <laughs> Look behind me. Head, head nose monster palooza. Confused monster palooza ish. Oh my god, I gotta write that down because I know I can't even spell it. Yeah, put already. that in the chat, man, because that's yes. gone already. All right, here we go. And a hey, check it out, it's Joey. What's up, Joe? Joe's going to monster palooza. Right. Who's going to monster palooza? Everybody raise their hand. Who's going to monster palooza? 
Joey, Joey, we can't see you, but we know you're raising your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it is, it's something we. I mean, like again, I, Paul, Paul helps keep me uh, tempered, but it, it is something we're just like, coming out of our skin, excited about uh, coming out there, Ted. And I know you've been so many times, and son of Monster Palooza, and bride of Monster Palooza, and you know, step stepdaughter of Monster. It's, it's, yeah. it's like all the different all the different iterations, but it is. Um, Something we just can't wait to get out there and, and have fun. No, it's yeah. right. I mean, it, obviously, it's been you know called off for several of the last. I think four they had to cancel, and uh, it it feels like this one's good. I don't think anything is going to change. It's only six weeks away or so. So, I don't, wait a minute, six weeks. Oh, jeez. Oh no, I've got to finish that. I've got to finish that. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's a shop full of stuff I also have to finish. That's not going to Monster Palooza, but. Right. Yeah. Actual work. Yeah. Not, not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Real yeah. work stuff that yeah. is actually paying. So. Right. <laughs> well, like Matt said, I've been trying to put the choke collar on him from like getting overboard, excited and telling everybody about it. But guess what? Tonight, Matt's off the leash. Matt, <laughs> do your thing, buddy. Get excited. We got Ted on. You know what I mean? Ted's like, we're right. Our, our booth is right next to Ted. How cool is that? I know you guys are a couple of steps away. It's going to be fun. That's oh fantastic. We're, 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 you're gonna have to send over your crowd to our uh, to our area a couple of times. You know, we'll, we'll just share crowds. How's that? We'll, we'll just share you know, crowds. Yeah. Are well, you guys gonna I, do? Well, go ahead. And, yeah. Talk talk about it. No, I was actually just gonna say we're probably gonna rent an ice cream truck. That's all. We'll get people over to our booth. Nice. Yeah. I would. But, it sounds like a good idea. We're gonna have some. Now, what are we gonna do? I don't know what we're gonna do. We're Circuit we're just fanboys. Like pumpkin seeds. Like pumpkin right. seeds at people and <laughs> come over. Nice. I'll launch them out of a slingshot. That'll hurt. Oh yeah. You're gonna have one of those giant uh, hooks that they have for uh, you know that they have for really bad acts in vaudeville. We're just gonna be <laughs> right. pulling them in though. We're gonna be pulling them, <laughs> Pull them in. over. Yeah. Hey, you come here. Do the, you can do the snaggle tooth. Exit stage lefty. <laughs> come see us now. <laughs> so we we are gonna carve live, which is. We'll, we'll probably spend most of our time either car. You know, well, we'll be making something all the time that we're in the booth. But Paul and I and Mickey were like, we got to escape the booth because we want to. We're, we're so excited to see everybody else's stuff and and do the walk around. So we're we're gonna have like kind of a, a big TV there and have like some of our episodes and clips and stuff like that showing on a loop and 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 so we'll do that. But one of our biggest goals is to be carving live and then be able to talk to people we've either had on the show or would love to have on the show. And just spend 10 minutes with them, film it, um, and then kind of put that in the old highlight reel. But that's, you know, it's it's probably a big departure from normal people who attend um, Monster Palooza who are who are extremely talented like yourself, Ted, and who have been there many times, yeah. and who are there to 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 bring to bring the world, you know, permanent art like uh, that you're you're bringing. Um, right. So we're kind of in that you know ether of uh, not the most permanent uh, art, but we're we're certainly gonna. We're going to bring a few things there to the, the museum and and to our table that are a little bit more permanent, um, but all all kind of a themed pumpkin somehow, maybe. Great. I'm going to treat it like a live carve event, like we do in you know in uh, September and October at these bigger places, but just with a smaller subject, I guess. You can't really get pumpkins yet in June, right? right. right. Though you should in California. You guys can grow anything you want year round. Right. Right. <laughs> you should. I is it too early or too late for me to start growing pumpkins for you guys? You could, you might be able to bust out a couple. I, I mean, that, that would be lucrative for you. I'm just I saying. I don't know how long it takes to grow a pumpkin. How long is I know? I know it, it's the size of like a little tiny basket or baseball. By the time we yeah. you know we get them. Yeah, it's like carving a pumpkin like like that. So. Yeah, that exactly. that's a challenge as well. I accept. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah, just get somebody get some foam, some big foam pumpkins from somebody. You yeah. guys can just carve those. Right. And you can hand yeah. it out. If we need a respirator and hand out respirators to anybody yeah, within a hundred right. feet. <laughs> yeah, Are we're we... not we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna go live to answer this question. Uh, we're not gonna go okay. live. We're actually gonna we're gonna be shooting a whole bunch of footage from it and then have like mm -hmm. a whole big recap because we don't know how how the uh, yeah. internet's gonna be there and everything. And we, yeah. we, right. we definitely wanna have time to mingle and talk and you know and uh and definitely you know talk to people you know at the show as well. So uh, but we'll be shooting quite a bit of footage for it. Yeah, cool. It's going to be fun. Can't but wait to you guys. Though. On that Thursday, if you've missed an episode, now's the time to get caught up. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you can always go back. Exactly. But yeah, we're really, I mean, super excited for it. Well, cool. I already know. I already know. I'm going to miss my connector flight, so I'm going to get well, it probably later. Here's wait a minute. Oh I yeah. Saw, hey. Whoa. I just saw. <laughs> See, he knows. Yeah, you know what? We do. He knows I'm glad you. Way. I'm glad you mentioned that. Can we, <laughs> as as a veteran, you know, of of the show, is there alcohol allowed inside the venue? I have no idea. I mean, Not that I'm aware of, but a um, lot of solo <laughs> cupping going on. Well, because you know, half of our shtick, half of the thing for the show, which we're about to do, is we review beer. It's our carving oil. It's what gets us motivated and social to kind of hang out and do what we do. So right. we'd love to carry that tradition into it too, to get some craft beer and you know have a beer at the be you know beginning of the night. I've, or the I've never or heard of anybody bringing alcohol into monster palooza i just don't think it's done yet so you're saying there's a chance <laughs> you know i'm saying that you know i don't think anybody ever has done it so they usually <laughs> just have soda <laughs> i'll be reviewing a and w root beer yeah maybe a diet soda yeah. or something yeah oh that's yeah. not bad <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we'll bring up a lot of it in our stomach because there's a lot of great breweries and uh, places to get beer around there. So, yeah. um, no, Pasadena's got a lot of great places to to run in, grab something. <laughs> that is the best. So, yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it's called a styrofoam cup. Um, ah, uh, yes. Red <laughs> Solo Cup. I've, yeah. I've often had a cooler under uh, my uh, my table at the booth. So. Okay. 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 Well, that's well, to many people. So if we get a fancy I'm, enough can, Mickey, I'm, then I'm nobody's going to know. Wear the beer helmet. Completely not allow it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. All of a sudden, that we're here. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a, a phone call. Uh, we are we are no <laughs> longer allowing <laughs> any liquids in the vehicle. In the, uh, in the vehicle. <laughs> anyway, but well, Ted, you you had a beer there. So uh, what 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 are you having tonight? I'm having soda. Oh, oh it's a soda. The official right. yeah, non-beer of Monster Palooza. <laughs> It's it's the uh, yes it's the soda of uh, the Golden Colorado Brewing come Blue Moon Brewing, Blue ah. Moon puts out a nice soda. So oh, interesting. there you go. Very yeah, it's nice. Just their, it's it's their Belgium white Belgium white soda. So oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh look, look at this! There. There Great go. minds think oh, alike. Look at that! All right, well, so <laughs> Paul's having a problem. <laughs> And Great I'm minds think alike. I'm the official a, uh, soda of Carvers and Creators. I'm, yeah. I'm having a blue can. It's okay. um, Kona Brewing Company Big yeah. Wave Golden Ale. So it's um, it's a blue can. So I'm, I'm I'm I was just you know one wavelength off of the blue moon. Yep. Make well, it Smurfet, like Smurfette's ass. Exactly. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be in the cool kids club if I didn't have a blue can. Oh, what oh, is go. going on oh, tonight? <laughs> So uh, I have a McKellar Windy Hill, which is um, my gateway drug into hazy IPAs. Oh, um, it, oh. it is awesome. And the cool thing about McKellar is that they actually have artwork on all their cans and in their um, in their pub houses by an artist named Keith Shore. Um, he also does a whole bunch of um, uh, baseball cards for Tops as well. Like they, mm. they have this Project 70 where they do – unique art so if you could see like the, the little character on there mm -hmm. that's like that's like his trademark and uh yeah Is so the hair coming off of one of them um yeah it's because it's windy of course oh, oh. what it's, the it's, hell it's, it's, his uh little toupee came off or <laughs> so uh cheers everybody um, cheers, guys. thank you for joining yes cheers, and uh, yes mm. we just blew her away that's right oh, I see what you did there. good one See how that worked. <laughs> and I saw I saw Mick Frazzlestash jumped in early, so a big hello to him. And thanks. Yes, Ted, thanks he's, a, he's a, a a big big fan, and he's always on. So we're really grateful cool. to have him. Well, how do you do? Yeah, yeah. Josh <laughs> can be there, right? Rainy old England. England. Rainy old England. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, uh, any Rick recommendations on what to do, where to go downtown? Oh, there's a. Oh, there's there's a yeah, I was gonna say there's a booth, you know, you can in, come to our booth and hang out right there, and you can hang out with the four of us. There you go. <laughs> yeah, 
that's 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 the only you thing jump, to do in Pasadena. Jump back and forth between uh, uh, Carvers and Creators and uh, Foam Fabber Booth. There you go. Yeah. Jesus, it sounds like a dream to me. What kind of merch you guys gonna have? There's always merch there. Well, yeah. hold on, Mickey. This is what you put in the cricket sound. <laughs> we, we got okay. we got stickers. We've got <laughs> stickers. We're gonna have T-shirts. Um, what else are we gonna have? We're gonna have. Uh, uh, did we say stickers and T-shirts? How about T-shirts? T-shirts. I may have a couple of things that I've been working on. That and are I, just I kind might, of my I might have a few things too. A couple things we, we're working on them, but. Cool. When you, you know what the bad part of committing to something is? You actually got to follow through. So then you have to do like, it. So yeah, you I don't like want to say things. it necessarily live here and then go. Nah, we're not going to have that. <laughs> I also have that problem where when I make something that I'm supposed to be selling and I like it, it's mine right. now. Well, that's kind of like <laughs> with this guy. You know, yeah. it's like saying I'm going to raffle him off. Oh, I got a feeling that guy's going home with me. All yeah, my clothing so is going to get left behind, so I can put him in my suitcase. This yeah, we, this will be finished and be at Monster Palooza in the oh, wow. museum act in the museum actually. Nice. Okay. And then um, this guy will be finished and at my table, um, and I'm going to do a raffle with him. And we're also going to scan him, and I'm going to have a few uh, 3D printed uh, copies of that that will also be in that same raffle. And then I'll have some smaller ones that'll be for sale. Oh um, my god! Look at that, Mickey. Nice timing. I am so I I'm going I'm I'm front end loading on this raffle. Uh, I am going to I'm going to find out how many tickets you have and purchase ninety nine percent of them and let Matt and Mick have the other one percent. I I know it's going to be one of those things that it's going to I'm going to finish it and just go oh I want to keep that but I'll, ah. I'll make it I'll make another I'm I'm going to scan it so it'll it'll be scanned I'll be able to print one out so I'll always have it but yeah um I think it's really fun to be able to uh, someone out there is going to have a one of a kind. So, and now, now this is made of foam. That's all upholstery foam. Yeah. So it's like oh my God. what I was snipping away with here and what I've done before with you guys and, and, and this fellow here, oh, you know, which was all, that, all upholstery that, foam. Now, I don't know if we ever see, seen that your, your, um, your, um, your pumpkin live Completely before. Finished. Like so can, can we, can we zoom in on that? Cause I, yeah, this fun. thing, if you see it in person, it will blow your mind. It's so cool. Now, if you remember, now this has been a, a, been a quite a while, but look at every single detail. This, this, so, this was a um, an ogre that was mutating, um, right? Mutating, 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 mutating ogre. ogre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Oh my god! That, I still can't believe that thing. That's just. And so the the zombie's done the same way. Oh, he's bigger. It's 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 yeah. It's a little bit. The head's uh. Oh, long so you can see how big this is. But again, it just all uh, snipped from foam, from upholstery foam. Good lord! And then uh, different layered up thin pieces of foam laid on, and then it's all latex rubber that I'm stippling over the top with tissue and latex to give all of the nice uh, wrinkly textures and and tendons and veins. So I mean, I'm about with the texture on here. I'm probably about. 50% done because it just I just keep layering it and every now and again I'll put a piece of tissue on or a piece of cotton and I love the texture it made and I'll just remember oh how did I do that let's I want to add more here and there so mm. um you know he's going to have this nice little exposed brain here up here and <laughs> you have some nice guts and this started as like right behind me I was doing some maquettes um earlier I mean, these are from like almost a year ago. Oh, wow. So these started out as just little clay maquettes. Oh, good Lord. And looks the guts hanging down. And that's out yeah. of Shavant? Shavant? This, and... is, this is Shavant, yeah. Oh, look at that one. <gasps> so a couple different. I've got, I've got like about four or five of these guys that I was just noodling around with. And so that's that's kind of what this guy, the big guy, is going to be. And at some point, I want to finish these and mold these and, and cast them. So... Um, oh. So I've got those, but I'm going to work with you guys tonight too, because I, I, again, oh, cool. I'm, I'm cheating a tiny bit only, but, um, so the first time I was a smart ass and, uh, used foam to carve my pumpkin. Yeah. And then I felt guilty about it. So then I bought that small pumpkin 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was like the only thing that was left over. It was after Halloween. Yeah, it was and, a dried uh, out. Yeah, I remember that was, one. Yeah, there was just, it, it, but I, I got something done, you know, for that. It was a little Frankenstein, was it a Frankenstein or the monster or something mm -hmm. like that? It, yeah, it was yeah. something. So, fr it was Frank. That's right. Because I ended up doing Danny DeVito from. Right. That's right. Yeah, it was, it was just and Frank in general. Sinatra. So. I did Sinatra. Yeah. That's right. But, uh, so I figure I just go with a whole different medium and I've got, okay. I've got uh, some monster clay sitting here and I, I quick, quick Ooh. made a, uh, quick made an armature and uh, started a ball shape. So it was just some tin foil underneath this and with some monster clay, um, not knowing what we were going to get, of course, because the wheel, yeah. the wheel, the wheel speaks to us. It does. And, it yells uh, at us and calls us. <laughs> exactly. laughs at us. So I've got my monster clay that's been sitting over here under the heat lamp, like uh, softening up. So I'll start. I'll start putting some clay on this guy as well. What did you say you heated up with, Ted? Did you say you had a heat lamp? I, I've just got a lamp here, like um, just one of those uh, metal lamps that you can get at a. Uh, uh, home like a shop light. Or Lowe's. Yeah. A shop light. Yeah. yeah. And I just put a, a, a real bulb in there. This is funny because I was running around looking for a bulb and we use all LED yeah. bulbs. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Don't, they don't throw any heat. So I always put some tin foil around the uh, the heat lamp and then that's just kind of shining down about six inches above the clay and it, sh you know, just softens it all up, turns it a little bit molten. And then I've got a, a wire or a post it's on so I can move the lamp up and down. And it, 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 if I move my foil here, it just gives a nice warm glow on me. It really it does. does. It, it's like it's, a, like it's, it's beautiful lighting and it's a functional. It's a exactly. way. <laughs> what you were just saying about the light is such a good tip because I've been working with a lot of monster clay lately and running up and down, popping it in and out of a microwave for a couple seconds to kind of soften it up because that stuff no. goes from molten to ice essentially yeah. in like five minutes. No, like I said, I just, oh, well, it, I, I turned my camera here, but so it's just this ah, little uh, set up here. So they got the light, and then you can see the clay down below there. Yeah, yeah. That's and when you idea. when you scrape off a top layer, then you have then it's then it's starting to moltenize the next layer. I mean, yeah, it's, it's all nice and soft underneath. And I mean, oh, yeah, this is, Mickey, can really you save the audio, audio of what moltenize is? <laughs> moltenized. <laughs> moltenized it. Okay. Matt Hopper moltenized. I'm uh, I, I, I've, I've come from a science background, so that's why you, you don't hear that word often. So. If you ever write a book, can that be the title, please? <laughs> uh, yeah, when I do my uh, magma uh, eyes, <laughs> liquid hot magma. <laughs> boy, oh boy, we got a carve too. This is so much fun. Yeah. I'd rather sit here and watch. Yeah, Ted. I'm sorry, I'm 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 cheating with uh, some nice soft clay here. So, well, I don't know, man. Is... I got to tell you, and Matt, I, stop me if I'm wrong. I'm so used to working with squash in in like in working in reverse with this texture that I found mm. much the clay to be a pain in the butt. Really? Uh, well, because you got well, is... even if you add and you smooth it out, then you have that real smooth, shiny surface. Now you got to go over it with a soft rake to kind of blend the right. It, right. there's a lot of blending going on that I feel like when we have our scouring pads and we just know what to do with these so quick that I right. spent three times three times as long trying to get it to look just how I wanted to well, with the monster. The clay. same difference to me, you know, ask me to carve a pumpkin out of foam and I could probably do it pretty quick. Cause that's all I do. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. It's so weird to be, it's almost like a, I mean, I got used to it, but Holy crap. Was it different? <laughs> like at, at, at the last thing I did, I actually made the form, let it cool down and then carved into it rather than go additive and add stuff. Oh, interesting. To it. Interesting. Yeah. I, because it was just like, well, it'd probably be real quick if I just added, but I don't know how to do that right now. I don't have time. I got to work in reverse like I normally do. Whenever I've actually carved in clay, and it's not been very often, I, I have such a mind block with building from like a small form that I'll, I'll I, in the past, I've taken like a bag full of corks. I did this one time and and then wrapped that with tin foil. So it was just this lumpy mass. And then I just slapped on a bunch of different clay or same clay, but different, you know, thicknesses and stuff. And then looked at it for a long time and like, okay, that could kind of be an eye. That looks like, and so then I, then I had, I had a form and then my mind figured out, okay, well, I can make something out of this. But if it's starting with a armature, I just, my, I'm like, what do I do? I mean, anyway, I, I guess there's a human skull I could start with or something, but my God, right. it's, uh, it's just a different way of thinking. 
if I if I had started sooner, I was going to be a real smarty pants and like sculpt a uh, like a butternut squash out of clay first. <laughs> go into it that way, but I uh, I I know that this was a little bit last minute. You guys bringing me on, so I appreciate it. It's fun. So oh, thank you. You know, one, you one, one of it. yeah, and we can't thank you enough because I mean, I'm I'm literally oh, with, uh, I, I was the uh, I was the lucky guy. I, I was in California this week and got to got to go over and hang out with Ted. Not even knowing that um, our buddy, uh, I think it was Gino, wasn't able to come back, um, and 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 we started. You and I started talking about like you know him, and you know had yeah. a, a whole. So, so I'm like, this is like total serendipity, right? We're we're all together because uh, because he wasn't able to come because of um, you know again he lives Help across. Health because issues. he's stupid busy he's with uh, Weta. Yeah, a little thing called <laughs> Weta. So busy. A little thing called Weta. Yeah, that he helped run. <laughs> yeah, and it's just mind blowing that um, that he gives us the time of day like you do. I mean, it just blows me. But the f so I would love to hear from you because you talked to me um, when we were together about like a, a fun story of you looking over his shoulder while he was he was painting, right, or something like oh, yeah. that. No, I, I, I first worked with um, Gino at KMB Effects Group when. Um, what were we working on? I got pulled in. I got pulled in first to do Wyatt Earp, but I think we were working on the main thing was uh, uh, was name in the mouth of madness. Nice, I love that movie. Film, yeah. <laughs> so I got pulled in really to work on on that, and just watching the way Gino would paint, and you know, and I'm over there like doing my thing, snipping my foam and carving up all these little like foam guts and things for this one figure and. Then there was this other giant figure we did, but yeah, Gino's over there. And I just, I, the way he would go about painting is just bananas. I mean, like all of his little cups and everything was pre pre mixed and pre measured and had his tops on his cups and just airbrushing and going from like one little color and pour it back, going to another color. And uh, the guy's a genius, you know, and then working with him on, on spawn and, all of those films, you know, that genius film Spawn. Yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> great There's a lot of really cool stuff in that movie. I got we, great. I mean, the stuff that we built at KMB was just it was, it worked. It, it was probably the first time I worked on something that big. Was the Violator creature it was giant hydraulic creature, and um, I was uh, I was responsible for dressing. I was a puppeteer on the Violator creature. But uh, I was responsible for maintaining and dressing the Spawn costume, you know, on the performers, not just Mike, Michael White, Michael Jai White, and um, then the stunt performers as well. So I would dress those guys. But then Gino was a sculptor on that and painter. And so, you know, so, yeah, I've, I've, I've known Gino, Gino for a long time. Great guy. I haven't now, seen him in a really long time. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a little far away. Yeah, he's been in uh, in New Zealand for years now, right? Been in New Zealand, yep. Yeah. So, so Violator was the he's also the clown, right? He's bold. Yeah, like, the clown the clown turned into the Violator, so the clown was yeah. Uh, John Leguizamo. Oh, ah, you! I'm just gonna get Mickey with that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry no, but I'm like, I'm gonna stump Mickey. But he I'll say already, John Leguizamo. Yeah, Mickey got it. <laughs> I can't stump him. I can't. It's like stump the trunk. What was that on the metal show there? That metal yeah. show? Yeah. No, wait. How, how did you think you were going to stump him? Do you think he just knew it? or? or... I didn't we, think he was going to know it was John Leguizamo played Violator in that movie. Yeah. But look at the way he's just all cocky down the bottom. <laughs> he, he knows. knows it all. I knew that. I knew that. You know. Oh. No, that actually, you would, you would have stumped me. Yeah. I, I'm going to give you this one. Yeah, you would have stumped oh, me. We'll never know. We'll never Thanks, know. Ed. We'll never know. Never, never, never know. <laughs> my wife, we were talking the other day. I was talking to my wife, and I've got one of those stupid memories where someone can say, you know, the guy, he was in that movie. It was sort of sci fi, longish hair, and I'll just <laughs> blurt out a name. And it's like, how do you get a name based on like <laughs> <laughs> a vague reference? <laughs> a, really, a super vague reference. Or, yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't know because I had nothing better to do than watch movies when I was a kid. There you go. <laughs> but or make movies or whatever. So yeah, yeah. Yep. Encyclopedia of names. Yeah, but look at you now. Exactly. Look at you're, me now. 
you're not watching them. You're making them. <laughs> I'm making them. <laughs> you're making all the cool characters. That's like yeah. the dream. Yeah. I, I, you know, the fun thing is, um, since I've been on my, my own here, my wife and I starting our own little shop and I've got a lot of fun stuff that we've been doing this last year, but I can't talk about any of it. I know. When I was there last time, you were working on something big for a company called PlayStation. I think you can you can now talk I about can, that. One. I can talk about what I can talk about with that, which is okay. the we've been doing a lot of costumes for them. Um, I think it's all together. It's five characters, um, but I think 11 or 12 pieces for that. And the first one, it was released. And it, basically, these costumes are for... Um, conventions and whatnot so we we did the uh the aloy costume for the horizon zero dawn or actually no horizon forbidden west is yeah, the new yeah. the new game that dropped i think in i want to say january or february yeah, just, something just like did. that yeah yeah um and so we did three of those costumes um and my wife spearheaded that you know that costume build she did a lot of sculpting and mold making and casting and painting and it was just bananas the amount of work yeah. that that she did it was just it was just incredible it was and, just and the quality of work with you i mean i i gotta you know if you follow ted you get to see little snippets of these kind of things on his instagram and if you just go check it out you're just gonna be like wait a minute this is this was sculpted it, it looked at the the, the yeah. uh, weave she wears and all that stuff is just it, it it just kind of blows your mind that it, that much attention to detail detail was paid um, on these things. It's Is this it? Yeah, there you go. That's uh yeah, that's our friend Kayla Emerson who wore the costume for us for these photo shoots. Um, Kayla, number one, beautiful lady, just beautiful spirit, beautiful beautiful person, and she said, "Sure, I'll dress in that costume." And we hopped over to uh, Griffith Park over here and shot some pictures of her. Um, but yeah, all of those pieces like the. Uh, the gauntlet, the forearm gauntlet, the um, the whole bodice piece. So my wife Ilona did all of this um, fine weaving, like hand weaving all these textures. Um, number one, because we wanted to match what the video game was. So that was all woven first, you know, with different strings or ropes or anything like that, just to get to the right scale. Right. And it was all silicone molded. Um, recast i mean there's so many processes and i've put up a couple of uh posts on instagram as to how we did that and uh a lot of those pieces though like the bodice piece in the front that's all sculpted from shavant wow. and uh that it's was just... cast in molded in silicone cast in yeah. urethane painted um every single piece on that costume is 100 percent custom wow everything there's nothing that's off the shelf any you know from the bow we 3D printed the bow here at my shop, um, molded that, cast up three of those. Um, the quiver was another thing that my wife hand wove the fabric for the quiver for the texture. <laughs> and then again, that was made into one quiver. And then again, silicone molded, cast in urethane, painted. Wow. It was it was a hell of a process. And, you know, it's it's a movie quality costume you know it's like you know there's there, and there's a lot of people have done some really great uh cosplays based mm -hmm. on this same costume you know but we knew that we had to be we had to be as accurate as we could you know from playstation but both my wife and i we don't we don't produce something that's not there you know it's we have to be accurate and my my wife is 120 percent accurate it's like if there's something she doesn't like you know we remold it we recast it you know everything like that so there's a number of pieces that it's like nope that's not right and it got scrapped and redone and wow. remolded and you know because we we wanted to make sure we were making the best one out there they were paying us to do it so we've got to make the best one you know we we certainly don't want somebody doing a cosplay that's going to beat us <laughs> <You Right. know? laughs> it certainly wasn't a competition but you know we, we were making what we felt was a film quality costume ted i say the same thing all the time this isn't a competition either but as, if i finished first i win <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this well this just to let you know i'm done no <laughs> 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 if, me at every 
if you're a cosplay person and you see this photo and you know what it's for, I mean, you're, I mean, that's three of them for crying out loud. But um, this is this is um, like nerdgasm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, that's the word I was looking for. Actually, thank you. Hundred percent. You know, we've, we've had a few people that reach out that, that have reached out that are cosplayers and they're looking at it and going, "How'd you guys do it?" It's like, wow. it's, it's what we do for the film industry. It's like you know, it's right. it's three D. You know, some of it was modeled three um, D, but not much. The uh, the boots and the gauntlets, we three D modeled the form, so it was just a smooth form that we printed. And then on top of those printed pieces, all of that custom woven material was laid on top. Yeah. And then, you know, other pieces added and all that sort of thing. So then, and then that went into mold. So uh, there was very little, I mean, aside from the bow, there was very little like digital work being done in that. I mean, my wife on the quiver, you can't really see it in any of these pictures. There's a metallic piece that's on the side. Um, and that's all hand sculpted out of Chavant that my wife sculpted. Um, so she, she has all of these, she's yeah, so she, damn talented. I, I know you might be the most talented couple I've ever heard of on the you know, it, <laughs> it is, it's one of those Hollywood, it's one of those Hollywood stories. Is like, you know, you complete me, you know, what, what's the you know, <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 like it, Dr. Evil and Mini Me, which one's that's on? it. You, I mean, uh, uh, different movie, I'm, baby. Not, I don't I'm know. not sure but which it, one I am. I might yeah. be both. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's amazing. You really can't go what, wrong. What, what these two crank out, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it Thanks is much. um is weight an issue? Do you have to be sure that it's not too heavy or is We're, it I mean we that's Turbo the thing too is we want to make sure that it's um we want to make sure that it's light enough. So I mean it it's all pretty lightweight. I mean all the fabric, the skirt is like a um they're supposed to be banana leaves on the skirt, yeah. the shiny part and that's leather. It's all hand painted leather textured by hand um and then the 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 linen skirt the lighter green fabric below that um so it's a pretty lightweight costume there's not a lot on and in some of those pictures with kayla you can see in the midriff area it's supposed to look like woven grass um that was a sublimated piece of fabric that i um i drew and painted digitally um and then we had that sublimated onto fabric and uh, oh, it's really the only way you can do that without the pieces unraveling and coming apart. And, you know, and, and we also have to take into account that we don't know who's really going to wear these costumes, you know, right. when they go away. So we've, so you we've body built three. Size, right? right. And it's like it, we say that, you know, the, the person has to have very close to these measurements, this height, this weight, shoe size, whatever. And then they have to find the perfect person to fit the costume. And, uh, you know, they, they, they've had, uh, well, the three costumes went out. Uh, one was in, I believe, South America. They had another one up in San Francisco. And the other one goes to, I think, well, the other one might stay here in Los Angeles. So, mm. um, you know, but they'll travel around. They're, you know, these big road cases that we had made and it was yeah. a crazy complex job. But these are only, this is only one character out of the five or actually six that we did. And this is the only one so far that I'm, I'm allowed to show. Ah, so we've, okay. we've finished a number of others. We're finishing another one right now. Um, uh, my wife, Ilona, is in the other part of the shop where she is doing all the, the clean work, the, the sewing and fabrication. And um, so she's working on that character. And that actually, we shoot a commercial with that in about two weeks from today, I believe. Oh, wow. So, so, so did, you did not know this girl's measurements before? No, she, they did. What, we we kind of, we kind no, we did. So we sort of dictated it. We were like, got it. What's, what's the character? You know, how old is the character supposed to be? And uh, so then we were saying, okay, well, it should be somebody. I think, I, I believe the character is 18 years old, hmm. somewhere in about there. Mm -hmm. And so we just, you know, my, my wife is good with costuming, obviously brilliant with costuming. But, uh, you know, since so she's like, okay, well, they should be about 5'7 to 5'8, right, right. have these measurements. And so as she started building and, you know, on the mannequins that, that she's got, the wardrobe mannequins, then um, we could uh, dictate the sizes. And then so we, we told PlayStation, it's like, okay, 
how does this sound? You know, Got if it. the person, if the person was, you know, bust, waist, you know, hips, height, size, you know, and gave some examples and they were like, yep, great. I, okay. That's what we're going to build for is, is that, oh, wow. is that size. And then that's who they have to cast um, from town to town, you know, as they, but sometimes the, the performers, the actresses will travel with the costume as well. Mm -hmm. So if you hire somebody that's going to be in San Francisco or Los Angeles and you have to go to New York, they might take that person along to New York, you know, or, wow. or wherever, because they fit it so well and they look like the character so well. And, you know, it was interesting. I felt bad because Kayla, who was our model for this one, she's got beautiful, long red hair. But we also made these wigs because we don't know who's going to be wearing the costume. Right. Oh, yeah. um, so, of course, it's like, well, we could we could braid your hair and make it look just like, but we made these wigs. So we're going to make you wear a wig <laughs> on top of the exact same hair that you've right. got. <laughs> right. So... No, that's super. Yeah. I mean, that, that'd be like hitting a moving target if you didn't know, you know, the, right. the different actresses that are in, that are going to be this character. So, right. In my limited yeah. time in costume design, I was like, that's one thing that I, I definitely knew. Um, you know, going in, I, I, to give it to the next person who's going to build it, they'd have to know that. So, sure. Yep. Yeah. No, that's usually the first thing we ask is, what's the size? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I've been a total. You know, I, I'll, I'll round this whole conversation about this game off because I played the, I started playing the game. I have, oh, okay, cool. Um, and it, in, and, and it, honestly, I did it. One of the big reasons I did it is because of, of your inspiration, in, being inspired by what you guys did. And, and oh, cool. I really wanted to see all the, we, you know, and now I'm like always in, in the game, you can go and pick in different, um, uh, it's I guess her armor and and right. each one of them has these insane woven and I can't, I'm trying to find the one that that is this like epic final armor it's I think that one. Like, yeah yeah and, and I'm like oh, someday I'll get there I'm like playing the game so I can actually wear the same armor that Ted and Ilona made that's that's well, kind of why I'm the, the funny part of it is I mean we were the the gaming company I mean PlayStation and the gaming company Gorilla that did the game um they uh they were really great sending us photographs of everything and it's like we need a close-up picture of the inside of that gauntlet but rolled to the outside because we can't see you know say okay well they'd isolate that and send it to us and then oh, they ask for something else and they'd isolate it and send it to us and um you know all, all those little things it's like oh we never saw that there's this little metal bit over here and oh the left the right's different than the left and you know all that kind of stuff so that was a little bit um a little bit crazy making at time it's like oh no the the left boot's a little bit different than the right or the and sometimes we make some of these concessions you know where we or they would and we we'd write them or call them and say hey so there's this little piece here you know can we get away with doing oh yeah that's fine and mm. you know all those sort of things but yeah originally when we first were going to bid the costume out we thought it was the costume from the first game which is all like sheepskin or like uh, right. deer deer skins and, and lamb skin. Right. It's like they're just hides it's leather and it's like oh this will be this will be really neat this will be interesting you know it's kind of a fun costume my wife does a lot of leather work as well and uh this should be you know pretty easy and uh then we get the design and it was like oh crap this is all 100 percent hand sculpted molded yeah. cast this is not going to be a leather outfit and we're like all right, buckle in. This is gonna be a goddamn <laughs> ton of work right here. Plan B. This is yeah, it's yeah, it was. It was plan B. So um and I mean that's a th when you're playing a game, all these games, you know, there's what we call digital magic going on, where it's like you'll see like these laces like wrap around a boot. Yeah. And they go they go to nowhere. Right. And they just sort of they sort of just disappear or tuck in. And it's like, well, where did those, it's, it's almost sometimes looking at like a, an MC Escher painting uh, drawing. It's like, yeah. well, this sort of starts here, but when you look at it on the backside, it wrap around, it just disappears. Where'd it go? Uh -huh. And then you have to start to make sense. And those are the kind of things that we would reach out to the gaming people or from PlayStation and say, so we have to make this in the real world. Mm -hmm. So is it okay if we do this? in order to make that. And then they were, they were always cool. It's like, well, yeah, of course, there's no other way to, to do that in a video game. You know, it's not connected to anything. It for just real, disappears. So yeah, yeah. It just disappears. Wow. You know, so you've got, 
you've got some of that digital magic going on that we have to kind of make sense of and you know but that's, that's always fun you get to use some creativity and you know bring it into the real three-dimensional world you know matt if you really want to get to that point in the game where you wear that armor you could just reach out to ted and he could modify it in a 3d printer and they could make it for your seven there foot, you go. seven foot four frame <laughs> you, extra large you, for matt can you make a giant version double x uh, but I'm, in, I'm definitely going to need the wig too <laughs> oh of course yeah yeah we'll we'll, 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 we'll we'll get it done we'll get it thank done. You, thank you. yeah and the good thing is they're really cheap they're really you know Oh, you sure? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is. Uh, oh, you'll find them at Spirit Halloween this fall. Talk to another one. <laughs> yeah. And it and it and it, it simply just took a few weeks to do. You know, it's okay. not like we were. It's not like we were working on those three costumes for like six months straight. No, no. <laughs> you know, actually, Matt, if you go to his Etsy store, he's got a couple of them just sitting on Etsy. Right oh, there, just, there we go. Just there we go. sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Just pick the size and have at it. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> do I want right with parachute pants or not parachute pants? I don't know. Oh, well, it just, it depends on which version game. of the game that you're going with, you know. That's right. Good lord. Usually ships in three to four days. Yes, right. exactly. It's just like Amazon. <laughs> so um, I wanted to uh, put this up. Oh, yeah. look at that! Look at that! Hey, this is look, a lot. I can, I can tell now, what, you so. I can tell you so very little about this, okay. <laughs> but I want okay, to well, share the picture. That's about as much as I would understand anyway. <laughs> but so, so let me just, uh, I'll ask a question that isn't leading towards what this was, but, but so that under, so this is all 3d printed. Um, that under thing that with the eyes, the, the skull and everything uh, effectively that, that you, that, so if I'm picturing what, what's going on here, this is going to be filled with latex or is it filled with like a, a silicone or, or what's what's it you know, what becomes the skin around it that fills in this form this was for a show that i can't say anything about or who it was for or what right. i did or who the performer is but right. this is one a, um a small scale figure um and so we scanned the actor and or actors or actresses i can't say anything right um or you know beings from another world i don't know right we, we don't understand and, anything Who knows? and uh so these molds were actually produced in a pro uh, a digital program called zbrush and okay. so there was no positive ever created so like normally you do a head cast on an actor um, these days, they use the, the silicone called a body double. We used to use Elginet a lot more often for head casts. Mm -hmm. um, so you would typically get a head cast of an actor or for something, if you had to scale it down, maybe you don't have to do a head cast. Just do tons of photographs of the actor for reference. And then you get a really amazing sculptor that would come in and sculpt a small scale version of this. Well, we took it from a scanning process and then just went straight into digital and then we built the molds virtually. And then we okay. took those over to my left here uh, where I've got my 3D printers and we actually 3D printed these molds in resin. And uh, the center part there, that looks like the skeleton is the core. Okay. So we've got the, the, the front and the back of the molds which close in around the core and then that gets filled with silicone and the silicone goes in and around our core. And so we end up with a thin skin of maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Wow. And then okay. the mold comes apart from there, the skin gets trimmed and seamed, uh, painted, uh, it gets hair punched into it, uh, fake eyes put into it. You know, it's eyelashes, eyebrows, the whole bit. Oh, wow. Okay. And then, a full then a, a a figure is built from that um so hopefully people will be able to know about this project i worked on in maybe a year wow less than a year something like uh, that coming to some sort of screen near you at Ooh, some point you know, might be a tv screen might be a theater screen <laughs> might be your <laughs> ipad or iPhone. i have no idea what kind of screen this could come to <laughs> So I hope I've given away absolutely nothing other than the process that could we be sunscreen. Yeah, sunscreen. 
<laughs> I yeah. feel dumber for knowing it. <laughs> exactly. No, I just. No, I, so I, it was. Yeah, go ahead. No, my my point. I, I did the 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 intricate work you do just to. Th this is like the behind the scenes stuff. You you know we will eventually see that what was created out of this, which is equally amazing. But that was all sculpted. This this is um, really cool to me because it's it's the it's behind the scenes behind the scenes. It's like you don't even everything to make what you make and, and the quality that goes into what you make has so many backstories. And this is a, a, one of them. You know, the, the, just... the process that goes into things is, you know, and a lot of people don't understand it. And it was it was a funny thing, too, that like my mom, my parents, um, I had been out here for a good 20 years <coughs> and I did a, a tutorial with the Stan Winston School um, building. I can't remember what we were doing. I think it was the kaiju build when we built these uh, these kaiju creatures. And then I got my mom a subscription to the Stan Winston School so she could watch live. Hmm. And uh, on my way home that day from shooting, I get a call on my cell. And, of course, I put my earbud in or speakerphone so I don't drive and talk on the phone. Right. And uh, so my, it was my mom. And she was like, I had no idea until now exactly what you did wow because i didn't know the material that went into it i didn't know the labor and the time and all the intricate you know she's she i'm just baffled she goes i thought you just cut foam i thought you you know and i'd shown her pictures over the years yep. and uh but she was just like yeah i just i that's what i thought you did was cut foam and uh i was like oh no there's a lot more to it and then from then on it was just like so how do you do this and how do you do that? And oh, when's the neat. next time you're going to go live? Because I want to see how you do the next thing. And <laughs> but it, it, a lot of folks just don't understand. I mean, like, um, you know, it, it, and I, I certainly am not going to knock cosplay or any any folks that do that that have their own 3D printers at home and they're doing great cosplay costumes. They're building their own Iron Man costumes. You know, I got to work on Iron Man shows, and I know what goes into that. And like th this thing I've got sitting here on my desk that I, I want to work on and get finished. But I just I just bought this uh, file online was my Stormtrooper helmet. Oh, dynamite. Oh, and my God. So, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fantastic file. And um, and I just bought this online. So, you know, but it's a really intricate, really great sculpt that the person did. And, um, and a lot of folks think that you know you, you 3d print this and like you know my, my printer at the time wasn't big enough that i had to cut this down the middle and i had this had to be cut down the middle and so this has got to get glued together it's got to be sanded up and then a lot of folks think well that's what we do so it's you know in a, in a film somebody has to do that file to begin with mm -hmm. well then what we do if it's an iron man or a stormtrooper type <clears throat> helmet or anything like that we do all the sanding and polishing and finishing and like poly prime, you know, coats over this and wet sand it to a glass smooth finish. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we do a silicone mold of that um, with a core inside of it. And then we have to pour resin inside of that. We pull a new piece out and then, you know what they do? They take like 600, 800 grit sandpaper and they oh, sand it more. Oh and they God. finish it even more and they make it look even better, especially like an Iron Man costume. And then they remold it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then those are cast in like urethane. It's not cast in fiberglass. It's not cast in latex or anything like that. So there's all of these processes that we go through to make it workable. You know, it, and, and it's not like it doesn't come off the printer and, and we do a light sand on it. Right. And you, you know, give I, it a little paint I, job. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see so many folks that will bring a print right off of an FDM printer, like a filament printer that's, you know, yeah. it's almost the like lines. Hot glue and yeah. all the lines and they yeah. spray paint it and go, look, I did an Iron Man too. And it's like, no, no you didn't. <laughs> it's like, good job. I mean, like, it, I, I love it when folks do it and they're into it. And, um, and I think it, it's it's cost too. I mean, yeah. the cost in a in a film like this, you know, an Iron Man, uh, why did why does it cost a million dollars to do this and that? It's like, well, because we're building multiple Iron Man costumes. They're all being built from scratch. Um, you've got digital artists, you know, building the costume, you know, virtually, kind of like that mm -hmm. mold that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we don't we don't have the luxury of going online and, and spending five dollars on a nice file. 
of you know, just get an Iron Man suit on online. It's like because each Iron Man suit that we build or I used to work on, you know, that's that's a custom suit every time. You know, we we do that first. And then the folks, you know, that are the 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 the, the enthusiasts, you know, the people that you know, this is their hobby at home and and cosplay, then they're in ZBrush figuring out or they've got a hot toys figure and they're with their calipers trying to figure out how did they do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an amazing process to do this stuff. And, you know, it, it's within the industry and then the folks that do it for cosplay, it's like, again, it's a cost thing. I mean, can they afford to buy a thousand dollars or $500 worth of silicone yep. oh my to God. mold their costume? Right. Go All through the processes that. that we do. It's just like, it's, it's, it's really, yeah, it's cost prohibitive to, for, for somebody at home as a hobbyist to be doing that spending two, three thousand, four, five thousand dollars on silicone. Oh my god. You know, just to mold a whole suit and things like that. And yeah, every time I, I see a, a suit like that that somebody's done, I don't know if you guys ever were of a Pepecura. Where yeah, like Pepecura. I used paper, to print out yeah, all kinds of stuff. Paper patterns. And you glue or, or put those together. All those numbers. People, they'll spray it and it, it's just all paper. They'll spray it and seal it and they'll brush it, you know, thin coats of uh uh fiberglass resin and they'll sand that and bond to it and then that's the thing they wear oh my and it's God. like Ugh, yikes it's like well you know and they do such a beautiful job finishing it and it's you like oh no, no. Oh. now now you gotta get some silicone and mold that and then cast it up really nice and thin inside and all yeah that. but you know it's 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 uh it's pricey to do that kind of stuff so um it's speaking of pricey what does i and again this is because it's a new world with the 3d printing but what is a when you when you mentioned buying the um, the, the file effectively for that um, stormtrooper storm mask, what does that what does that run? I mean, I mean, what you know, is files it, what is it really? files you can get anywhere. Like, what's what's you know? Let me grab let me grab something up here. Like I've got I'm I'm nuts for uh, Captain America. Just love Captain America. Yeah. And so I I, I got this little file for uh, this captain oh, there you go you know and okay. it's it's uh just a tiny little resin piece and that's a couple of dollars to print that it's hollow okay um and the file itself is sometimes you know two dollars three dollars to get a file like that okay and um, the stormtrooper helmet i want to say was 25 dollars. okay for that and then i got if, if you look at my instagram it's kind of sitting over here there was a file i just got from a guy um oh, it's it. the uh the, the new uh the batman yeah the robert pattinson i just i love that that batman cowl yeah and uh, that file was a little bit more expensive but uh um but not ridiculous and i was able to throw i've got a a, a frozen uh mega mega eight uh sonic uh 3d printer and it's a it's a huge bed but even still i had to slice it down the middle the cowl oh, wow to get it to fit on that bed. But I mean, it's a huge bed. So does the, and, uh, when, when you're, when you're doing a 3d print of something like that and, it, and, and like you put a file in and you say, I want to print this, this size, does it, does it, does the um, software break it up for you or do you have to? No, you've got to break it up. It? You've got to, you know, okay. I, I'll, I'll drop That's it in, in a, there's a, a piece of software called a cheetah box that I use. And there's a, a bunch of different slicing programs that are out there, but I use cheetah box. And uh, so you can drop it in and it shows you basically like a virtual bed, like the printer space. And it'll show whether you're on or off the bed and whether it fits and you kind of tip it and turn it virtually okay. within the computer. And if it doesn't fit, I can put it into another program and just cut the, uh, cut the cowl in half or cut it into quarters. And, and that's okay. the thing, I'm used, I'm used to fixing things like this from my time in the shops where it's just like, eh, I've, I've got no problem where I'll, I'll glue the seam, the seam together. Let me grab, he's, he's sitting right here, but, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, this one I had, a, oh, that yeah. one I had a split down the middle and, but I'm going to be able to glue that together, do a texture stamp off of here. Cause there's like a really nice subtle, uh, leather texture on here. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the threads and all that stuff. But I'll be able to pull a texture stamp off of this and then so you know, do some fixing and stamp that up. And I'm, I'm just going to end up making this like a little lamp 
but uh, you know, this oh is a, a stiff, hard <laughs> resin. And uh, so normally, if if this were for the film, again, you know, the process that it would take is you'd have an artist that would do that, all these separate pieces, and then you'd mold it in silicone yeah. or mold it in other in some hard material or whatever that whatever works for whatever you've got to do, and. Um, uh, you know, that gets cast in urethane. You know, nothing's ever like fiberglass. Nothing's ever like hard plastic or metal. You know, if you're looking at metal on camera, more times than not, you're looking at urethane. urethane Something urethane. rubber. And there's all different variations of urethane, whether it's, you know, it's tough and it's, you know, really hard, but still it has some flex to it all the way down to soft stuff that, you know, when we worked on all the different Iron Man films or Captain America, things like that, they would have tougher helmets, um, some plastic ones that have a little bit of give to it. But then the stunt guys are wearing like these flex flexible urethane, you know, helmets because you know you don't. It's not a real helmet, you know. You yeah. don't want to. Yeah, hey, you're not getting hit so, in the head with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get injured by the costume you're actually wearing. So, <laughs> the, you know, the Iron Man suit was like you know like flexible materials and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So. Um, wow. Yep. Yeah. So now let me ask you a question about when you do seam it together and you're going into you you're gonna fix the split and the Batman cowl, right? You'll you so you're gonna make another small silicone stamp for that, right? That's yeah. What, what I'll do is I'll probably I've got a little bit of this material, and luckily right across the street from me is uh, Reynolds um, Advanced Materials. Yeah. And they have all the silicones and things like that, and then. Right up the street from them, I've got motion picture effects, or I can go to burn. You know, it's like the, all these places wow. are right here at the at the ready. But they've got this uh, fast setting silicone called a uh, body double, and mm -hmm. so I can mix that up, and I can just put that like on a on a flat ish area of that cowl, and that'll pick up the texture of the cowl. And once I've got that glued together, and you can still see that seam a little bit, I'll dremel it down a little bit. And I can fill in with some uh, um, maybe Bondo or some type of a putty. I'm not sure what yet. And then I can take that texture stamp and press it on there and hold it. And I'll, I'll hold it on the surface until that's dry. And it's going to squish out and feather the edges. And the texture is going to blend right into the other textures. And then when I paint it, you'll never see it. That's funny. That's actually what, kind of the second half of the question was what was going to be the material you'd use to press the stamp into. But you hold it there I while it dries. How long does it take to dry? Some of it, if I use just like an epoxy or something like that, you're, you're like five minutes, three minutes. Oh, um, wow. There's these these other glues. Do I have some here at my table? I don't. Um, but there's these other ones called, uh, um, what is it? It's a glue called MA300. It's a plastic welder. And it comes, you know, it's a cartridge. You have a nozzle that you put on the end, you know, a little gun that it goes into and you pull the trigger and it squishes out and mixes in the nozzle. And that stuff sets up in like two, three minutes. Wow. Yeah. So wild. Yep. Fun stuff. All kinds of horrible toxic chemicals that when I'm doing it, I don't have a uh, nice mood lighting on me. I've got all the doors open and I've got the fan yeah. going. I've got a respirator on or yeah. I'm doing it outside or wow. The job, the job that we were just doing, I was doing tons of fiberglassing, which I don't mind doing fiberglass work because it really is just sort of like mindless work you know once you're doing your mold on your piece and just you're putting resin on it you're taking your fiberglass material you've got a you know a two inch chip brush you're just tamping the glass down and while you're doing that you can listen to a podcast or have the tv on and you know oh, your wow. ipad out there and zone out listening, yeah. watch, zone out, listen, listening to carvers and creators and yeah, right there. There you go. <laughs> get the plug in get the plug in <laughs> you're so hollywood ted i know <laughs> <laughs> oh wait till this... i pull out the merch oh there you go what was this the fiberglass project you were oh, no actually this is I'm, I'm glad you asked me about this um this is a project that uh my wife and i are going to be doing in june um, oh end of end of June for a, a place in Idaho called the Idaho Art Lab. And uh, uh, there's a post on my on my Instagram about it. And I've got hold on a second. I've got some some cards I'm going to have at Monster Palooza. Nice. Um, but yeah, this is uh, we're going to be in Idaho um, with uh, this Idaho Art Lab. 
and they have a and i can't remember exactly what it's called but it, they have like these pioneer days like uh, uh where they they celebrate the pioneers and all that kind of stuff and so we're gonna do this bison which is actually going to be a costume that two people can be inside of oh my god and so there oh, you go and that's we're gonna huge use all of these, yeah Holy moses so we're going to use all of these organic textures you know all the fabrics and and rope and yarn and, and linen and um just oh to create god. the texture of it you know we're not going to try to like reproduce a bison you know with with fake furs and all that stuff I right, thought it right. would be a, it's more of a theater piece you know kind right. of like if any you know people have seen the uh, uh lion king theater the show. lion king yeah in new york I, or, we took our kids yeah. to the, the dinosaur right. one there is another one that reminds me of right yeah, yeah. so that's that's kind wow. of along the lines that we're going to be doing this so yeah idaho art lab that's what we're gonna we're going to be building a bison with a bunch of students that come in and we're going to be teaching them how to like pattern foam um texture the texture oh, the cool. foam texture fabric so ilona my wife will be there and they're just outside of they're about an hour and a half away from the border or an hour away from the border of wyoming and then into uh yellowstone national park so oh wow just it's just beautiful area so that's going to be a lot of fun we'll be doing oh, that in end of june project yeah so that's end of june for us and then we'll have all of our playstation done by that and then i've got to travel home to wisconsin we're doing a, a student art show from my uh, alma mater, my high school alma mater. Oh, no way. My, uh, yeah, my old art teacher has uh, put together this show and I think there's like 30 or 40 students that are gonna be contributing pieces, but it's over the course of his teaching career. Oh so my God. there's gonna be people oh, there that are 10, 10 years, 15 years older than me, 10 or 15 years younger than me. I think I was kind of right in the middle of his teaching career. <laughs> and uh, so it actually, he's he's going home with me, so he'll he'll be at the uh the local uh museum wow. that's amazing on display for like a month or so so i gotta ship him home as soon as monster palooza is done in early june he gets shipped home to wisconsin so hmm. so, so that, yeah. that that so any other notable i mean ted you're, you're in you're in hollywood pretty much i mean any 30-year career and all these movies any other notable sculptors or artists that were in um in that class in which which class? I'm sorry. In high the one you're going to, yeah, your your high school oh, class. No, in, my, in my high school, um, you know, I'm trying to think if there's anybody that that I know of that uh, there was one girl that came out here about ten years after me. Her name was uh, Lori. Oh, and I can't remember her last name. And I bumped into her at K and B. I was I was on set for a film, and um, I came I came back to uh, LA from being on set up north in uh, Chico, California. And there's this car sitting here with Wisconsin plates. And uh, <laughs> it's it's the dealership because there's a dealership tag on it. And it was from my hometown. Oh, and I gosh. walked in there and it's like, who's from Wisconsin in here? And this girl was like, me? <laughs> and I was like, hey, did you go to uh, this high school? Did you have these guys for teachers? And she's like, yeah. Who are you? <laughs> so, but hopefully she'll be there as well. Well, that's great. Yeah. Do you think behind the scenes, secretly, everybody that knows you are going to be contrarian goes, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's got to be a lot of people that just don't know, you know, it, it's going to be an interesting group of people because, you know, I graduated in 86 and it's just going to be, I knew those people. And so I didn't know the people years ahead of me or years behind me or anything like that. So it's going to be a really great mix at this show. It should be That's fun. That's cool. So yeah. your art teacher is still around? Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, uh, I don't know how old he was or how old he No, but you were like, saying he had students 15 years before you, right? Yeah. And I mean, he was a young teacher. So, you know, it's... Wow. Um, you know, he yeah. probably had like a 30-year career teaching and I'm... Oh, I'm guessing great. he's probably in his mid seventies right now, something like that. Oh, all right. So I might have been on the closer. I may have been on the closer end of his early career, not quite in the middle. Um, I know, but to be inspiring that many kids, he was. He yeah, seems that, like he was a yeah. really good art teacher. That's yeah. You no, know, he was. He was a fantastic teacher. He was um, the two dimensional teacher, so he did all the the drawing, painting, um, two dimensional arts, and then I had another teacher. Um, 
uh, did all the sculpture and we had an incredible art department in Wisconsin. Sadly, it sounds as if uh, they've really changed the curriculum. Damn and it. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, like in junior high, I had uh, I had plastics class. Oh, where yeah. we did yeah, we did plastics. injection. We did injection molding. We oh, made yeah. Nerf footballs. We did fiberglassing. We did blow molding. We did um, acrylic construction and things like that. Oh, it's all gone. Wow. It's all gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's probably all yeah. long gone. Now that, you, draw the, my, you draw the lamp on the table with pencils you had to buy before you came to class. Right. <laughs> Matt, remember when we were we had plastics um in uh Mr. Han. In, <laughs> uh and, and we make a pretty mean uh ashtray. That's right. In so we, would, we would take yeah, we would take like picture the blank, um, and they would heat it up and they'd push it over some form, right? And then that became like it was like an ashtray, like it, it was like um <laughs> Man, it was like it looked like you know. Picture your fingers like this. You take like a, a flower, plastic, right? It looked a flower. And you push it. You push the plastic in, and then it hardens in this shape. You take that home and give it to your parents for your, their ashtray. Right. It, it, the, the the the, the oh, wood so dowels. Right. Yeah, so wooden dowels. Ashtray, dowel, would, so ashtray yeah. would sit on top of it, or yeah. So yeah, so the ashtray. The ashtray so so picture like a, a flat board with like five wooden dowels sticking up. Exactly. Like that. And then, and then the the piece of of, uh, I guess it wasn't it was it was hot plastic right. sit on top, and you push it down into it, and then the form it forms around those little fingers, right? Right. And uh, exactly. and then it just it was it was completely mindless. And so that <laughs> yeah, was and doing, uh, there was another one doing that doing I loved. Yeah. I loved because it involved typography. Was you would put um you would put these letters down, and it was on this kind of metal plate. And it, there's all these holes in it. And then um, so that you put a sheet of plastic o over those letters the, and the vacuum, it, vacuum seal. One. And it would, it would vacuum yeah. it. So like yeah. it, you know, it was, and then it'd warm it up and then it would make this kind of mold. And it was mm -hmm. like, if you remember, like if you go to the snack bar, you know, at, at a, like a baseball game up on, 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 you know, th those types of kind of lettering and stuff like that, you know, it was yeah. like, is super super awesome and and to look you know i never really put two and two together that was really kind of formulative the the wood shop and plastics was yeah super super awesome during that time and it's sad you know, it's we, gone it's sad yeah it's it a lot of this stuff is is just gone away because the funding's not there or just they're not and we, we had the area that we were in was uh just so heavy in the arts you know it's midwest it's middle of wisconsin and you would think it was like all sports it's all football all baseball they were really big in the sports as well that was just that was just as well outfitted as the art department was because we had huge automotive area and in sculpture and two-dimensional right. we had um we had so photo cool. lab so we had dark rooms and all that kind of stuff and yeah i remember dark rooms yeah that was yeah that's so neat that's yeah, where you I mean, go and make out with your girlfriend. I mean, develop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would definitely get distracted somehow by all that stuff. When I, when I went to uh, high school, I've uh, never been a sneaky person. Just to let you know, <laughs> until, until then, until then, I, 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 I wasn't, person, I wasn't that lucky until uh, later, uh, later in my years in high school. But the early years, um, when I when I was uh, definitely much more dysfunctional, uh, we had we had metal shop. We had. Um, yeah. You know, different. I I actually took like a commercial art class. Um, it yep. was there was so much more. Um, you know, for these students. But you were talking about like the two D and three D. Um, two D and three D back then meant so much different than it does now. Right. Well, yeah, it's back then. Three D was three D. You know, that was sculpting and it was literal three D. Right. Yeah, throwing pots on a potter's wheel and. Um, making jewelry and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure these days, 3D, it's kind of like, well, we're going to make something in the computer, right? Right, exactly. So, yeah. No, no, no. We're going to sculpt something with our hands, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's three dimensions. Yeah, right. that's three dimensional. But it's like 3D now is, you know, ZBrush digital. files or, you know, digital, uh, yeah. digital files and things Paul, like that. Paul, did you guys have, did you guys have art classes growing up? Because I know you, you grew up an artist. I mean, you grew up doing art, art school and yeah, no, my school didn't have art. Massachusetts doesn't have art. But you, yeah, you were most artistic no art in high school, Paul. I remember. <laughs> I well, well, I was voted most artistic in my eighth grade class. Just so you see, know. so they had to have something. 
Come on. But then I failed art my senior year of high school. Oh, <laughs> how's that possible? Because, again, here's a pencil. Draw what's on the table. Don't come into my office. Oh, there. Okay. It was kind of the art teacher's uh, line of thought on <laughs> the way I remember it. And I would say, can I get a bathroom pass? And then I would go get high and skip school. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I would be an honest. I tried. I, I, I skipped out of other classes to get into the art room. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Well, Ted, we're getting to the root of my problem as to why I have to work so <laughs> and I'm not where you are. <laughs> this, is, this is therapy, guys. I, I hate to say it. They were turning, it, turning this into something else. Yeah. I had a creative <laughs> writing class, and all I did was draw in it. <laughs> <laughs> we like one giant introduction to the opposite sketch. Right. <laughs> Mickey and I would, would draw pictures of the teacher. And when we, we went to grade school together, we'd draw pictures of our teacher and uh, and pass them back and forth. And I, if I remember correctly, Mr. Dumond, who was sadly departed already a long time ago, actually, yes, was, yes. Uh, he, he found a picture that Mickey made of him that was like so spot on. I remember him look like, <laughs> like he did a double take, looked at it, looked at it, and then he crumpled it up. I'm like, no, that was so good uh, because he was on a, he was he was on a dartboard. That's right. Oh, <laughs> oh, <my God>. yeah. <laughs> But it was a really good picture of Mr. Dumond, you know, yes, rest his yes. soul, you know. Right. Yes. I, I remember a teacher crumpling up a piece of artwork of mine once, and I was just shocked. He did it right in front of me, mm. and I was just like, you know, I'd spent a bunch of time on it. And he said, do it again. Ooh. Yeah. Because it, it, yeah. it, was, it was one of those things. He knew I wanted to be in film, and he knew. And it was not a bad lesson, actually, at all. Just Absolutely, for, right. You know, you, you imagine, like, doing things like, like this or you know these guys and you know you're working on a film or something like that and they're just going to go down the line and go no no yeah yeah no uh can you do five more yep. and it's just like Ooh. no no yeah. i don't want to and it's like because you might be in love with this one and yeah and it's like you know as an artist i think as a, as a working artist you can't be in love with anything that you're doing it's just That's i mean so i'm in love cool. with everything that i do i love doing this because this is me um but when you're an artist for hire, it's just, you just got to do what they ask you to do. Yeah. Oh. I remember um, one of the, I know I didn't, I didn't take this. I wish I would have, but um, if, if I remember hearing that this one um, they did like editing for, um, you know, like, like, like uh, editing for like a, like a news show or stuff like that. The, those types of the, people are learning that brag, broadcast editing basically in college. Right. And basically what they did was they go, okay, the class will be at, at four o'clock in the morning that you have to come in. It's like a, kind of like a lab where it was like, you know, it was like an experiment. So they're like, the class is at four o'clock in the morning. Um, you have to be here. You have to prep. And then the class starts at five o'clock in the morning. And everybody's like, why would you do that? That's so stupid. You know, it's everything. <laughs> the news, right? Exactly. That's, that's, that's you know, sometimes you have to get up that early or, and be, you know, productive at that time or, or be, and then, but it's for like the six o'clock news, you know, right. 6 a.m. So you had to learn what, what, what that was, the prep for that and getting in there and stuff like that. I thought that was so brilliant to put people in that situation because that's going to happen. That's a real life situation. Absolutely. Sure. No. I, how many times I got a call time of like 2 30 a.m., 3 a.m. Cause you've got to put oh somebody in makeup. You know, yep. and you're doing like a four hour makeup on somebody and they've got to be on set at seven thirty in the morning, eight in the morning. Oh my and so God. crew call is seven, you know. Everybody else is showing up there, but the makeup artists and hairstylists are showing up at three AM. That's right. So they can wow. do a you know, a four hour makeup, a three hour makeup, you know, on somebody like or some some elaborate gag or something like that, or you know, even to just get characters into costume, you know, some of these costumes that we've done in the past were you know, it, it takes 40 minutes to get somebody into one of these costumes and you want to make sure that, okay, you're prepped. So if you've got a 7 a.m. call, which means you've got to start getting somebody dressed at 6 a.m. If it's 40 minutes, it's like, let's start at 6 because we know there's going to be a problem. Yep. And if you're going to start at 6, you may as well get there at 5 and be prepped and ready. Yeah. And ready for the first guy to come at you at 5.30 a.m. That means yeah. you have to have all your stuff ready the, the day before. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So that means when you work until 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and you <laughs> wrap, it doesn't mean you just throw the costumes in the corner. Then you have to prep everything for the next day. You actually oh, wow. leave the stage at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, and then you've got a 5 a.m. call time. That's right. Oh, the you glamour. Know. The glamour. Oh, of I was going to say, dude, so many people want to go in the film. The, 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 the glamour of the film industry. There, there, you know, sorry, sorry, everybody. There's no glamour in the film industry. The only glamour you're going to see is on a red carpet. That's right. <laughs> Everything yeah. else, you know, every actress or actor that comes in early in the morning to get their makeup on, you know, they're in their sweatpants, you know, they're drinking their coffee. They're trying mm -hmm. to get ready for their day. There's no glamour. There's no glamour. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, if you love it, if that's what you want to do, I have a great time doing it. It's it's tons of fun. It's gonna you know it's been a little while since I've been on set, and so this this shoot coming up in a couple of weeks is going to be a great deal of fun to me. It's, oh yeah, I I love. There's nothing I love more than going on a film set because then that's honestly that's where the magic is happening. Yep. You know, in the shop is one thing. It's fun to see it all come together, but being able to take it out, you know, even with this PlayStation stuff that we've done, being able to you know take uh, um, our friend Kayla to uh, Griffith Park to shoot some pictures of her in the Aloy costume, you know, that's going on set to me. It's like, oh, yeah. it's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we get to see, this is the fruits of our labor. We get to see this finished, you know, so that was, that was a lot of fun just doing that. Yep. Ted, do you have, do you have a favorite, I mean, with all the different movies you've done, do you have a favorite onset memory of like being, like you mentioned the early times and stuff like that. Was there one that sticks out in your mind is like that if I could relive that moment again, I would for, for there's a know. there's a bunch. I've got I've I've got two and I hope I haven't mentioned them before because now I've been on with you guys a few times. Um <laughs> and you're coming on again. I hate to say yeah, it. Didn't. Didn't. Right, <laughs> next <laughs> time next time we're just gonna do something easy and talk about religion and politics. There we go. Oh, <laughs> so good. So good. And uh <laughs> so, no, I, I think one I mean I've been all over the world really on film sets. You know, I, I spent months and months in Romania in my twenties making horror films and of course so that's fantastic. Um, yeah. You know, shooting at castles and shooting, you know, in in northern Romania. And I shot all over. I've been from coast to coast in Canada, coast to coast in the United States. I've been to New Zealand and and shot, you know, Hercules and Xena and stuff like that. Um, nice. A lot of these places where you go to, though, I mean, we shot, um, we did all the Kia commercials at, at Legacy Effects. So I did all the Kia hamster. The hamsters. Um, oh, yeah. yeah the, the rappers, the, the dancing ham, hamsters. The ham, the yeah. ham stars. So, we, right. you know, we always had a great fabrication team on that. And it was always the same people that were going out. It was me and these, um, typically these two or three other ladies that would go out with me, uh, uh, Dawn and Amy and Ina. And we would take these all over. But one time, uh, Amy Wetzel and I got to take the ham stars to Prague for a shoot. Uh -huh. And I mean, it, we were, we were shooting on the stage in Prague that the uh, uh, Mozart debuted Don Giovanni. Oh, so on. we're, we're shooting on this stage. It's like, we're shooting hamsters <laughs> on the stage where Mozart stood and debuted Don Giovanni. So, I mean, that's, that's something you don't forget. Yeah. Um, oh but God. one of one of my other favorite favorites was uh, shooting here in L.A. for a Capital One commercial. Um, we did this giant squid at uh, Stan Winston Studios. And then we got the shoot on Paramount lot in the water tank. Ooh, oh, so wow. the, the, the construction crew, the, the um, set construction crew had built a giant like Nautilus type submarine partially submerged or partially uh, risen out of the ocean. Okay. And uh, so then we had our squid that was kind of up on top of it and tentacles going around it. I'm standing in like four and a half feet of water, puppeteering the tentacles in the front. And they digitally removed us in post. And we had guys in jet skis doing little donuts in the water, <laughs> you know, in this four and a half foot deep water making the waves go and we're trying to puppeteer and they've got wind machines and rain machines. Oh my God. You know, they yell cut <laughs> and I look up and I'm just like, there's the Paramount pictures tower. This is the same pool or, or, you know, whatever a uh, tank that they shot for um, Star Trek four when the bird oh. of prey crashes in the San Francisco Bay. So wow. that's the same tank where they had the, the bird of prey 
Um, you know, I'm just like, this is Hollywood. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm in a tank with wind machines and a wetsuit and a giant squid. And it's like just <laughs> too cool. It's just, it doesn't get much better than that. No. Wow. Until several years later, uh -oh. one, of, one of my last times on set um, at Legacy Effects is they sent me to set for a week of reshoots or not reshoots, but um, some pickup shots they wanted to do for uh, Endgame, for Avengers Endgame. Oh, wow. Nice. And <laughs> I, my, my, my big claim to fame right now is I was the last person to put Robert Downey in an Iron Man costume. Oh it my was, God. It, was, it was the last shot where Robert is, you know, Tony Stark is kneeling there and does his yeah. I am Iron Man and snaps his fingers. And then I got to dress him up in the Iron Man costume for that. Oh my God. And so that was super special. Wow. You might need to change your name from Foam Faber to the guy that put Robert Downey in his costume. <laughs> the last thing. I mean, it's kind of long, but it's yeah, pretty exactly. awesome. No, it's that not is, that a, that's, yeah, that is an epic. That's an epic claim to fame. <clears throat> and then, and then if, if anybody hasn't seen that show, I, I don't think he makes it. So I don't know if that had anything to do with your uh, spoiler alert. Oh, he just okay. snaps oh, his oh, finger. Oh, never he mind. snaps his finger and he's just fine. He's just fine. Okay. He's so there's still the Robert Downey fine. Jr. We're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's okay. Yeah. Robert's just fine. Good. Yeah, but that that was that was huge. That was cool. But yeah, I mean, That's anywhere from Romania in castles on like little three hundred thousand dollar films to end game it's kind of it, how do you pick a favorite you know wow yeah you just you just don't i mean it, it could be i could i could have a favorite moment on probably one of the worst films ever i don't know right <laughs> I've, I've worked i've worked i've definitely worked on some stinkers um, <laughs> oh that that's that's a that's a great segue maybe we'll, maybe next time you're on with us we'll have to talk about all your stinkers <laughs> we'll talk we'll talk about stinkers. I, yeah, I don't know. I hope hopefully I don't get in trouble. Well, well, for it, so. we'll make vague reference to them. What do you say? Yeah, make vague reference. That's right. That's right. You know, luckily, that's radiant luckily, I've never worked with anybody that you know is terrible, you know, actor wise or anything like that. Where it's just like, oh, I don't, I, I never want to watch another one of their films again because of so and so or this oh, or that. Good, or like, good. honestly, I mean, because I've got the geez. Now I just remembered working on Air Force One and meeting Harrison Ford. You know, wow. so, oh, wow. so that's a it's another one where you know, and, and Gary Oldman and both of those guys were just so cool. Really? You know, yeah. That's such a that's such a unique. I mean, everyone always wants to know what are they like in real life. I mean, and, and people hear rumors or you hear, oh, don't work with so and so because they're a real a hole or or you know, I finally got to meet my idol ex, you know, whoever the person is, and they were right. not at all like I thought. So it's it's actually neat to hear you know when you actually when you meet these guys and, and they were good people and you'd hope they always were because if, especially if you're a big fan of them like i'm i've always loved harrison ford stuff and i just never obviously never met the guy but let alone got to yeah. work with him like you did i i'm a, a tiny bit of a fan of harrison ford a little bit yeah just <laughs> yeah. look behind him he's got a little star wars stuff maybe up behind yeah, him well i've got my shrimp troopers but then i've got some cases up here that is nothing All but the, indiana jones indiana jones yeah. and oh, i've got bookcases in the house that's nothing but indiana jones books <laughs> and novels and behind the scenes and so yeah and ted, and ted i think when i was there i saw you have you have the idol he switched out i think you i've just got have i've that. got what? i've got an idol yeah and it's like you know years ago that was floating around in town where people had castings of castings of castings and everybody had an idol casting and um i've sculpted I some i kind of want to have i want an idol somewhere in my dumb collection because i mean those that that's could could not be more iconic you know the one mickey if you remember like you know when he switches out for the sand and mm -hmm. you know that the gold mm -hmm. idol with him going yeah exactly <laughs> right yeah. so yeah but maybe so the I, real I, I maybe the real I one is the bag of sand there that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I can. I can always put that up. Just a bag of sand. You know. I can. I, just, I know somebody that might be able to hook you up with an idol. Oh. <laughs> wow. I, I simply. I just simply have to meet this person, whoever it is. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try well, to remember his name. And, and Ted, as you as you well know on this show, this yeah, is the yeah. fastest ninety minutes on what? the internet. We've gone a hundred. Wow, Holy we did it. Fun. No way. We, we did broke it. our record. It feels like an hour. Holy <laughs> shit. Exactly. So 
Um, let's go around the horn and see uh, where we're at with our carbs. Let me uh, put up the, the uh, carving subject is confused monster palooza ish. So <laughs> let's um, let's see what we got here. Uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to step up? I'll go. I wanna, I'm going to do some more lines. Somebody else go first. All right, I'll go. Paul, you want to go? Okay. I'll go. be the, the, the guy. All right. All right. Ooh. Blocking. Ooh. Still blocking. Um, have no idea what I'm doing. He's gonna be a monster of some sort. Don't want he's hard to make a kaboka squash look scary, so I'm not gonna go that route. Um, he will be confused, and I'm gonna take some time and really wrinkle him up and make him look nice and soft and squishy, and I'll add some stuff to him that makes him look uh monster palooza-ish. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a raffle ticket into his backside. You know what I'm saying, Ted? There you go. There you go. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Thanks, yeah, Tom. what do you got? Okay, so my guy, wow. I'm, 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 uh, let's see if I can get some good light on, lighting on him here. So, uh, Strike one. Physics. physics. <laughs> so I've got his tongue sticking out. And oh, I, wow. I thought the same way same way Paul did. So I'm, I'm going like confused. He's like, huh? Like that. But but he's gonna have he's gonna have and and I'm kind of determining what the hell the teeth are gonna be. But uh, at this point, he's gonna be confused and um, you know whatever. Monster Palooza, so, I love the eyelids, by the way. Yeah, yeah. he's got the heavy yeah. eyelids and, right now. Yeah. So I, I tried to get some lighting on him that was a little bit better uh, for you know visuals. But oh, looks great. That's right there is the lighting. Out. That's the lighting right there. Don't move that lighting. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Okay, right there. Wonderful. Yeah, that's my girl. Well, blocking, blocking attack. Just, just, just blocking it in. And I, I'm, I, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do to make it monster palooza-ish. But I'm trying to figure out. Nice. You know, oh, I'm oh, kind oh, of oh. confused, and I'll, I'll probably end up taking some pictures of my face, just going. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I usually, I usually have to do like some photo reference to, you know, because I actually, I think uh, this guy right here. Started yeah. out as my face, just like, you know. <laughs> so there's lots of pictures of me on my iPad of just kind of going, you know, yes. making weird faces and stuff. So that's that's as far as I got. So we'll we'll get him sculpted in. I love wow. it. Wow, you can see that. Let me see that, that, lower, that lower lip is, is confused. I'm like, I look at yeah. that and I'm like, huh? <laughs> it's like so great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to get more scrunchy. I think. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that'll be the picture. I'll do a screenshot of what I just did. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Well, for more of Ted's work, uh, you can go to his Instagram uh, at foam faber. Is there anywhere else we could see your work or do you sell anything or I've got um, on, on Instagram, there's a, a link at the top of my page in the bio and that'll take you. I've got an Etsy page where I've got like stickers and pins and uh, uh drawings i've been trying to get into more like caricature work and stuff like that i've been having fun doing that um and uh so yeah find that link and there's a link i've got a facebook page uh, foam, uh, uh ted haynes foam faber on facebook so um i i try to post often i haven't been able to post a lot just because of the work that we're doing i can't really yeah. and i have no time i mean this guy it's like and when i was doing this pumpkin here too for you guys it's like I uh, maybe an hour at the end of the night, every now and again, you know, throughout the week, I would just like, okay, I've got to work on the pumpkin for an hour or two, or I've got to work on the zombie. The zombie I haven't touched now in like three days. So I've got to jump on him for a little bit and finish up texturing. So, well, the um, fact that you, you jumped in with us and, and did the, did yeah. the challenge is, is, dude, we couldn't thank you enough. I mean, I mean, with oh, everything you've got coming up, and I, I even happen to know, and I won't spoil a single thing, but I happen to know of a little, peek behind the curtain of what you're going to bring to uh to uh monster blues yeah, we're, we're hoping fingers mind. yeah fingers crossed yeah. i'm not going to say anything about it right now because i don't want to i don't want to either spoil it or like paul you're talking about earlier commit um <laughs> promise something that can't be done um <laughs> working with a bunch of artists here in town including uh one academy award winner and uh uh we're, we're trying to make something happen for monster palooza and it's it is not a small feat so if it doesn't work out for this monster palooza it'll be at the very least it'll be at son of palooza in september 
Um, but we're going to try and make this happen. And if, if we can feel that it's happening, I'll start posting a little bit at a time uh, on my Instagram and you guys can see that. So either way, it, we're going to start teasing it pretty soon. Um, and it is an enormous project. Yeah. I am intrigued nice. that yeah. I, just, I know nothing about it <laughs> that I can't believe that I said yes to, or my wife can't believe I said yes to. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, when it. a good, when a good friend says, you know what I've always wanted. And I like, Oh, I've always wanted one of those too. We should do it. <laughs> <It's> just like, <laughs> I so just it. go to Monster Palooza and you can potentially see it, or go to the next one and see it. But either way, right? Just be prepared to be and blown I'll, away. I'll, with be, everything posting, he I'll does. be posting about it. Yeah. So I appreciate well, it, guys. Thank you. I'll be in town on Thursday if you need any last second help moving anything. <laughs> <laughs> we're. I think. I think we're going to be moving in. Um, Wednesday is the setup for the uh, for the museum. So oh, okay. um, oh. if if it happens, we'll be moving it into the museum. Um, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Right <laughs> Can't wait to yeah. see it. We well, can check us yeah. out at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, guys, any last words? Uh, a note we will not be here next Thursday, but we will be here on the 28th with another Carvers and Creators. Guys, did you have any last words? Yes. Wish us luck in Orlando. <laughs> yes. Yeah, go to Orlando next week. Just, Ooh, just go that? follow this guy and 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 be a yeah. fan like we are. I mean, just a just the best. So thank you so much. You bet. Thank you guys. Hi yeah, to Gino but, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Feel yes. well, better, Gino. Gino. Yes, we'll we'll definitely have Gino back. Um, but we'll be back in two weeks with another Carvers and Creators. After that, it's Monster Palooza. We can't wait. Thank you, Ted, for coming on of short thank notice. You. We always thank enjoy you. you. See you in two weeks, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.